In this video, we'll have a look at how to test for structural invariance for uh, the Nettemeyer uh, model. So here you have the incremental model, and it's replicated exactly as it is in the papers with a number of addition. I've added to regression path from WFC to IRP and from FWC to IRP. I have also constrained these two variances, E11 and E16, to be equal across groups. That's equal across groups, not equal to uh, each other. Uh, now, in my model, I already have labels on the paths here. Uh, and if you don't, you don't need to worry. You don't need to name all the paths individually. They will be automatically named by the multiple uh, groups uh, model of function in uh, Amos. So make sure that you have both of your uh, samples uh, set up uh, and that you have the uh, adjustment for uh, uh, measurement or error done for each of the samples separately since they have separate alphas. And when you're ready for, to test for structural invariance you will uh, click here on multiple groups analysis and you can click OK here. And here we're only interested in the structural weights. So we'll click here and we can ignore the rest of the models, two through five. We're actually going to delete them in the next step. Press OK. And you double click on model five here. And we're going to delete this model. Delete this one as well, and this one as well, and this one as well. This one we want to keep. Now this is our cons fully uh, constrained model where all the regression paths have been constrained to be equal across groups. So we can close this. And now we'll run it. Oh, I need to load up my data sets first. Now we should be able to run it. Let's have a look at the output. And we can have a look here at the uh, estimates. And if we switch, if we look at the constrained model, and we switch between groups, we'll see that it's uh, constrained to be equal, except for the paths uh, between observed and latent that are adjusted with the alpha for each of the samples. However, if you look at the unconstrained model, you'll see that these are different for the two samples. Now, let's have a look and see whether we have a good argument for structural invariance. So we'll click here on model comparison, then assuming model unconstrained to be correct. Now here we see uh, data that compares the constraint to the unconstrained model. And we can see that the difference between these two models is 25 degrees of freedom and a chi-square of uh, almost 48 and uh, a significant p-value. This means that the constrained and the unconstrained are significantly different from each other. That means that we don't have a case for saying that this uh, model is structurally invariant.